Okay, Elise, we're just a minute after one, so maybe um, I'll just do some brief intros and we'll give people a, a few more minutes to roll in. So it looks like we have Tanya and Tom here with us. Thank you very much for joining us. See, Sadie, I see you're here as well. Um, so we'll get we'll get started. My name's Shane Schofield. I'm partnerships manager here at Swim Drink Fish, and I'll help moderate today's discussion. With me, we have Elise Mackey, who will be leading today's training and give you all the great information that you'll need for your control visit in the coming month. So if you're here to talk about blue flag marinas, you're in the right place. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to introduce yourself in the chat box. We are gonna use that throughout today's discussion to share links with you. And then you're welcome to ask us questions uh, through that chat box as well. I will also mention Google Meet, the software tool we're using, does have a closed captions feature. You're welcome to turn that on and that will transcribe everything that we're saying. So please feel free to use that. Um, if you run into any technical difficulties, sometimes exiting the meeting and rejoining can help, or we, we are also live streaming this session. So what that means is you can use the live stream link, which I'll share momentarily, and you don't have to use the software tool. You can just follow along with the live stream. Um, and then that, it says, ask a question. So you should be say, seeing Elise's screen with maybe some other people at the bottom. Um, so that ask a question at the top of the slide that you should see that link. You can use that link to ask questions if you're watching the live stream. So you can use the link or you can use the chat box. We'll get your question either way. Um, Elise, so it looks like we have a couple people, a few people with us now. Um, should we get started? Yeah, I'm happy to get started, so. Okay, so I'll uh, roll on with a bit more of an intro. Um, so welcome everyone to our, one of our very first Blue Flag Beach training sessions. Um, before we get started, we just want to acknowledge that uh, where a few of us are, are coming to you live from today, um, we would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is that of the Michisagig Nishnabeg, specifically the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. From time immemorial, they have been and still are the stewards of the land and the waters of this area. Through our programs at Swim, Drink, Fish, we have begun and are committed to fostering better relationships with Indigenous communities in order to continue the stewardship of the waters of which we all rely on so much. And we just want to say with that, we want to say thank you for joining us. We're very happy to, to see your faces today. Um, you're welcome to have your cameras on. Um, and just this, um, these control visits are a really important part of blue flag of the blue flag program. At Swim Drink Fish, we talk a lot about creating a swimmable, drinkable, fishable future. And blue flag is a really big part of that. And without you, blue flag would not happen. So thank you for volunteering your time for this session today and for your site visit in the coming month. We are very grateful that uh, you've decided to, to join us. So a few housekeeping things. Um, Today's session is being recorded. You'll see the recording button or the indicator in the top left for most of you. So we're recording today's session. There will be a lot of information um, to absorb. It's okay if you miss something, you can rewatch the recording. I mentioned we have the chat box. You should see that on the, on the right side of your screen. Please feel free to type any questions into the chat box throughout the presentation. We have a few designated question breaks throughout the presentation. We'll make sure we get those answered at those times. And if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone, that helps reduce background noise so everyone can hear. And we also have a control visit form that we're gonna share with you. You can see the link on the screen and um, I'll share that link as well in just a minute. But you're welcome to follow along. You're welcome to open that link during the presentation. It'll be the form that you use in your site visit, with your site visit. 
So we'll just help you get familiar with it before you show up on, on the day that you visit the Blue Flag Marina that you're going to be uh, visiting. So I think that all sounds great. Uh, I'm now going to pass it over to Elise Mackey. Elise is our water stewardship specialist here at Swim Drink Fish. She's a colleague of mine and is an expert at Blue Flag. So she is going to be leading today's training session. Uh, thank you all again for being here. And I'll now turn it over to Elise. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Shane, for your awesome introduction. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for all being here. Uh, we couldn't be doing this program without volunteers like you who are coming in and taking on important things like conducting control visits at marinas. This is the first training session for control visits at Marina Blue Flag sites. First, I'm gonna introduce you a little bit to Swim Drink Fish. We are a Canadian charity working towards swimmable, drinkable, fishable water for everyone. And we do this by using citizen science and communications technology to inspire people just like you to know and safeguard your local waters. Blue Flag Canada is one of our newest initiatives and it's helping connect millions of people to environmentally friendly beaches and marinas across the country. So hopefully you have all watched the orientation video that was sent out by email on July 23rd. If you did not receive it, please let us know and we'll share it again. It's a great intro um, to review before going out and doing the control visit. This training video here that we're recording is the second step to your journey to completing your control visit in August at your selected Blue Flag Marina. So during this training session, you will learn a little bit more about the Blue Flag program across the world and in Canada. And we will also provide you with an overview of how this one day of volunteering is going to look like when you're in the field. And then we'll go through the detailed questions that have to be answered during your control visit and that are in the form that we'll share with you. So you can run through the questions as we go through. First, I'll recap cap a little bit from the or orientation video, so I'll move through this swiftly. But the Foundation for Environmental Education, also known as FEE or FEE, which is located in Denmark, developed the Blue Flag program and criteria to guide beaches and marinas towards best management practices for the environment, water, and people in the, their communities. Blue Flag certification demonstrates a community's commitment to providing a clean, safe, and accessible waterfront. Around the world, Blue Flag communities are respected for being among the best places to live, work, study, and play, and we're really lucky to have uh, blue flag beaches and marinas here in Canada to enjoy. Uh, FEE, Foundation for Environmental Education, is an international non-governmental non-profit organization that supports, helps, supports and helps manage the blue flag program across the world. The blue flag program started in France in 1985 and has been implemented, implemented in Europe since 1987 and in areas outside of Europe since 2001 when it South Africa joined. Today, Blue Flag has become a truly global program with an ever increasing number of countries participating in it. At the start of the 2020 year, Swim Drink Fish became the national operator of the Blue Flag Canada program. The Blue Flag program is the leading program promoting environmental education and sustainable management for beaches and marinas worldwide. The blue flag symbol and the flag itself is a highly recognizable uh, feature of uh, beaches and marinas across the world. Currently, there are 4,664 flags flying in 46 different countries across the globe. We're really lucky in Canada. This year, blue flags were awarded to 29 beaches and nine marinas, marinas for the 2020 summer season across uh, Canada. And you can see the map here indicating where the majority are located. So why is Blue Flag so trusted and respected across the world? The first reason is each flag is awarded for one year only. So everyone must reapply each year and prove each year that it continues to meet the Blue Flag criteria. The Blue Flag criteria are divided into four important categories, environmental education, water quality, environmental management, and safety and services. Within these four categories, there's 38 individual criteria that Blue Flag Marinas have to meet. 
And all these criteria are there to challenge local authorities and marina managers and operators to achieve high standards in each of the categories. The second really important part of the blue flag program, which maintains its credibility and maintains the credibility of the blue flag symbol at beaches and marinas are control visits. So by using a standardized blue flag marina control visit form, you will visit your assigned marina in August and check to see if blue flag criteria are being met. These control visits are essential to ensuring that the blue flag symbol remains a trusted and respected symbol in Canada. We really want to emphasize that the control visits for blue flag sites are done by volunteers across the world. It doesn't require that you be an expert or have a background in marina management, and it's a really amazing way to become part of a global network of people learning about their local marinas and waterfronts. But if at the end of this training session you have any questions or concerns about completing the control visit, we're here to help guide you and support you on your journey to completing it. So if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to us and we'll, we'll be providing all our contact information before you head out into the field to do your control visit so you can get in contact with us at any time. It's really important to understand why we do control visits at Blue Flag Marinas. The control visit you will be doing is important because they help ensure that Blue Flag standards are being maintained at all the certified marinas. They're, co they're conducted to help identify and report areas of non-compliance to the marina manager, firstly, but also to Blue Flag Canada and Swim Drink Fish and in the end, Blue Flag International and the Foundation for Environmental Education. It's also really important to keep in mind, though, that the control visits are not meant to police the marina operators or managers. These visits are instead meant to help maintain and enhance the standards at the marina. And we really want to emphasize that they should be a collaborative, collaborative effort and they should be an enjoyable experience for you and the marina manager. Um, so they should be a fun day out in the field. We're not looking for any kind of um, friction or um, conflict when you're heading out to do these control visits. So there are really big benefits that come out from these control visits. Firstly, after you submit the control visit, Swim Drink Fish will assess your responses against the Blue Flag Program criteria. These control visits are important because they help improve communication between Swim Drink Fish, myself, Blue Flag Canada, and the marina operator. At the end of the summer or the marina season, the information you gathered will help us produce a short report for the marina itself. And this report will highlight the best management practices in place and also help identify any improvements that the marina might need to do in order to ma maintain the blue flag standard for the next uh, season. During the visit, you'll go through each question on the control visit form while walking through the marina and you'll be filling in your observations. The questions on the control visit form, which hopefully you've opened, all refer to blue flag criteria. We encourage that you give an additional, you give any additional comments and observations. And we highly recommend that when you're out in the field at the marinas, that you emphasize the best management practices, the really cool things that marina managers have put in place. So any good observations that you're seeing, but also provide any suggestions for further improvements on the form in the comment section at the end. Everyone is very well aware of um, the, what's happening across the world because of COVID-19 and the pandemic that we're experiencing. Uh, we wanna emphasize at Swim Drink Fish that we do have measures in place to protect staff, volunteers, and also the public who you might be interacting with. So before you begin your control visit, <clears throat> you must submit the signed COVID-19 agreement that we will share with you with everyone who's doing a control visit after this training session. And you will also have to complete the COVID-19 questionnaire provided in the agreement. And you must answer no for or none of the above to all the questions in order to start your control visit. These questions include things like uh, have you been out of the country in the past 14 days? Do you have any COVID-19 symptoms? Um, if you're answering yes to any of these, you cannot conduct the control visit until you meet all, until you can say yes to all the criteria, all the, all the, for, all the questions on COVID-19. Uh, all of this will be shared via email, so you don't, there are no missing links. We'll make sure that we get these to you. So now we're going to go 
into the good stuff. So we're going to focus on the criteria themselves that you're going to be looking at. Uh, the first thing you're going to do before going out and doing a control visit is you're going to submit the COVID-19 form, the swim, drink, fish, and do the questionnaire. But then you're going to arrive at the marina. So most marina managers will attend or they will have a representative attend the control visit from the marina. This might be the case for some marinas, but likely not. Some, at some, you may conduct the control visit alone, but it's preferred that we have someone from the marina help walk you through so you can help um, find all the items that you have to find and fill in the, when you fill in the form. So on the selected day, you will arrive at the Blue Flag Marina at the specified time. We will be arranging this uh, with the marina operator. So there's uh, no need for you to worry. We're going to be, um, as soon as the control visit sites are selected, we'll be contacted the marina operator and be putting you in contact with them directly and we'll help uh, ease the communication between everyone. When you're heading to the marina, you wanna make sure that you bring your phone with the control visit form saved on it so you, so you can fill it out when you're on site. If you don't have a smartphone phone and you can't load the Google form, a, hoard, a hard copy of the form can be used as well so we can provide that to you if you don't have a smartphone form smartphone you will start filling out the form based on what you're seeing at the blue flag marina and you'll also ask we also ask that you take lots of pictures while conducting the site visit and once you've completed the control visit the and the form has been submitted you can submit all the extra photos that you've taken to us via email so just again before we launch into the criteria uh, this is the form that you'll be using. The results from this Google form are automatically uploaded to us. Um, so the only thing you will have to share are the photos. The form is made of, up of yes and no questions, short answers, and then list for selecting items uh, that you're seeing. So this is what the form looks like. I'm gonna quickly link into it if I can. And hopefully this is everything that you're seeing here. So this is the environmental education section, but you'll, your first page will look like this, control visit form, and then you'll flip through to each section and fill this out. So this form is broken up into six sections. Section one is uh, background information, and that you will, you'll know most of this information before you actually head out to the marina. The second section is all about environmental education criteria for Blue Flag. And then section three uh, focus on, focuses on the water quality at the marina. Section four looks at the environmental management criteria fulfilled at the marina. And section five assesses the quality of the safety and, surface, sur safety and services offered at the marina. The final section, section six, offers a place for you to add some final remarks about the site visit and also provide any feedback to Swim Drink Fish and the Blue Flag program itself. This is the first time uh, we are having volunteers conduct control visits and we want to improve upon this so we can uh, conduct more in the following years during our Blue Flag season. So any feedback uh, in the form is very, very welcome. So, Background information, very self-explanatory. You're gonna be looking at date and the hour of the visit, obviously the name of mar the marina, the municipality you're in, your name, and then you're gonna mark down the weather during the visit. And did the site manager or staff meet you? And if they did, what was their name? And then you'll go right into environmental education. So the first, very first thing you're going to check, and you'll likely see it as you enter into the marina, is this is if the blue flag itself is flying up on the flagpole. If it's not flying, we need to figure out what the reason is, um, and it must be explained on the form. There could be reasons such as uh, there's they weren't able to install safety ladders or something like that. So we need to outline why it might not be flying. Though at most sites, uh, we would already know this at Swim Drink Fish if they were unable to fly the blue flag. But if for some reason when you arrive, it's not up, please mark down the reason why. And then you wanna check that the blue flag has the current year stamped onto it. So each year, because it's awarded annually, the flags are marked with the current year. 
this year being 2020. So we want to ensure that the flag has the 2020 year on it. And then you want to check around the marina to see if the marina has a blue flag info board, information board in place. So you can see here, this is Tall Pines Marina blue flag information board. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a photo of this blue flag information board. You can see there's a logo here. You can see information about blue flag here. You can see uh, pictograms here, information about uh, blue flags for boat owners, environmental information uh, about Tall Pines Marina itself, and then a code of conduct. So these are all things you're gonna to wanna to look for when you're out there. So the reason why we want to check to see if the pictograms are on the board is because pictograms are really, really important, uh, especially for people who might be visiting from another country who may not speak English. Uh, pictograms help people locate facilities via images rather than words that they might not understand. So we wanna ensure that there's pictograms being used on the information board. You wanna ensure that there's the correct blue flag logo used. So you can see here, this is the correct blue flag logo up here in the corner here. Oops. And then you wanna check to see if there's information about the blue flag available on the board, which we at the Tall Pines, you can see it is. Uh, then you wanna ensure that there's the correct contact information. So again, blue flag, used to be run by environmental defense, but we've sent stickers to all blue flag information boards to update this portion. We want to ensure during the control visit that the sticker has been applied here so that it has swim, drink, fish contact information um, and that it's updated so anyone visiting the marina can contact us if they need to. Uh, you want to check if there's the code of conduct on the information board. This code of conduct might also be posted on a community board, whether it's a cork board that it's uh, tacked onto. So you want to ensure that you can uh, go find that where it might be located. And then you want to check if there's information about the local environment there. This here, it may be on the information board, but it could be on different smaller information boards spread around the marina. So this is an example of a board you might see there speaking about uh, the local environment and habitat surrounding the marina. It's in the corner of this slide here. You also want to see if the marina is promoting the ind individual blue flags for boat owners. It's typically presented on the information board itself and then also at the marina office. So you'd have to head into the office and ask about the blue flag, individual blue flags for boat owners. You can see there's a flag on this boat here. They're smaller flags that boat owners can put up onto their boat to display that they are abiding by the code of conduct at the marina and they're following um, the blue flag criteria. And then you want to see, does the marina have information on safety precautions posted? So this would typically be rules surrounding refueling of the boat, uh, safety around the toilet tank pumping places for boats, safety on the docks, safety on the decks, and uh, overall safety for the public when they're at the marina. It's usually reflected in the code of conduct as well. And then you wanna to check to see if the marina is able to offer three distinct environmental activities in the municipality or the community. Now we wanna keep in mind this year is very different from uh, other years due to COVID-19. And it's up to the discretion of the marina manager and the municipality as to whether these activities will take place. Some have shifted into passive activities so that no one is gathering in, the, in a place to uh, go over um, environmental education. So if they are not offering these activities, we'll just ask that you get the reason why. So it could be COVID-19 being one of them, for example. And then uh, we're going to flip into water quality. And following this slide, uh, we have a break for questions. So I'm just going to quickly uh, go over this. You're going to have, you're going to, the next step for water quality criteria at the marina is walking through, through the marina along the docks and checking uh, the water in the marina itself. So we want to check if it's clean. There can't be sewage, litter, oil, film, odors, foam, discoloration or floatables on the water. So sewage 
uh, indication of sewage would be things like uh, wet wipes, uh, tampon applicators, condoms. So items like that, that people might be flushing and that are end ending up in the water. Litter, pretty evident water bottles, chip bags in the water, oil films. It ha has a rainbow sheen on the water. So you, we want to um, check to see if we're seeing any oil films. If you're smelling anything funny, like musky or fishy, as well as oil or acrid sulfur, you want to check to see if there's foam or scum on the water or if there's any discoloration. So if it's bright green, it could be an indication of blue blue green algae or really brown could be an indication of some kind of spill or black as well if you're seeing black water could be an indication of, of a spill as well and floatable so again litter and things items in the water and then if you are seeing uh any uh indication of these you take photos if you're seeing clean water that's awesome you'd also take a photo of of the clean water that you're witnessing so I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna check in with Shane to see if we have questions. I think a couple came in, so. Um... Yeah, we've had one question from Patrick. Patrick, so nice to see you joining us again. Thank you for attending and thank you to everyone who maybe popped in a little bit after we started. Uh, so at least Patrick's question, which I answered briefly in the comments, but maybe you can expand on it. How receptive will Marina staff be to volunteers showing up to do a blue flag control visit? So what you said, Shane, there is, is exactly uh, what we've been experiencing. They're very recep rece receptive. Blue Flag Marinas and beach managers have worked extremely hard to be able to meet these criteria. So they want to be able to show it off and be able to tell the public, yes, we're meeting this criteria. Come and visit and have a look. It, it, if there are any major changes and if criteria are being met, generally they are flagged with us throughout the summer and we're checking in uh, quite quite often with all site managers for beaches and blue flags. So they are receptive to having people, especially volunteers and the public come visit the beach and be able to show off all the hard work they're doing. Do we have any other questions about criteria that I've gone through? So it looks like those are all the questions now. I'll just everyone who's on the call, please feel free to type any questions into the chat box. You should see it on, on the right hand side of your screen. Um, I am just going to share the link to the control visit form one more time for anyone who missed it. So Elise is, uh, has referenced this form a few times. This is the form you're going to be using during your, your control visit to the Blue Flag Marina. And we'll just be help, it'll help get familiar, help you get familiar with it. Um, so if there are no other questions, um, maybe we'll give it another 10 or 15 seconds if people want to type any questions into the chat box. And if not, then um, we'll flip I'll, forward. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Elise. Thanks, Shane. So um, you will be into section one, two, three, four now, environmental management. So this is all about how the marina is managing the local environment, ensuring that uh, there's no litter getting into the water, there's no pollution getting into the water, um, and uh, where uh, there are sustainable best management practices happening at the marina. So the first thing you're going to look for is if there are garbage bins at the marina. They could be located along the docks, but typically there would be a separate area um, for a uh, the garbage bins and recycling bins where marina tenants or people visiting the marina would bring the garbage. And you wanna see if they're regularly emptied. Typically, they would have a service come in and empty the, the, the garbage bins. But if they are overflowing for some reason or there's litter or trash all around them, this is something you, we would want you to flag and also take a picture of. And then you would want to give a rating about if there are enough garbage bins at the marina to serve all the marina tenants or visitors who are visiting the marina. So it'd be a yes or no based off what you're seeing. Then we also want to check to see if there's facilities for receiving recyclable waste materials at the marina. For blue flag criteria, there has to be at least three different streams of recycling available to marina tenants and visitors. So for example, there has to be recycling for glass, plastic, metal, or glass, plastic, um, and a cardboard, 
Um, the more, the better. So if you're seeing more than three, that's really great. And then we would ask that you take a photo of the different types of recycling that can be received at the marina. Again, you wanna check to see if they appear to be regularly emptied, if they're overflowing, if they're full to the top, this would be an indication that they're not regularly emptied or that there's not enough of them available to the marina tenants. And then this is a really important one, but we want to ensure that the marina has disposal for three relevant types of hazardous waste on site for marina tenants as well as visitors. So this is really important. It helps prevent uh, any hazardous waste from getting into the water at the marina or out elsewhere. When it's provided, when the service is provided at marinas, it's much more likely, less, it's much more less likely to get into the water because people aren't going to be getting rid of um, hazardous waste in other ways. So relevant hazardous waste at marinas includes oils, used oil, antifreeze, metal scraps, paint and paint scrapings, batteries, anti-fouling cleaning products. Uh, so you'd be looking to see if there's a separate storage space, space for hazardous waste. It has to be a space that is environmentally safe and it's stored separately. And it also has to be away from children. So um, typically locked and um, away from pu the public areas. And then you want to check to see if the hazardous waste stor storage area appears to be regularly emptied. So if there's an abundance of, of uh, hazardous waste there and it's not stored properly, this is something you would want to flag to us. Then you would take a photo of the hazardous waste storage area for us. This is a guideline. So uh, is there bilge water pumping facilities? So this is oily water that might be uh, in larger boats. This is not an imperative criteria. So it doesn't, it, for blue flag, the marina does not have to have this, though it's highly recommended. So if there's bilge water pumping facilities, that's great. You can take a photo of them and say yes. If not, that's also okay. Um, we would likely recommend that they have them installed for the following year, but again, it's not required by blue flag. However, toilet tank waste receptions are required by blue flag. So this is an imperative criteria. They have to have a toilet tank waste reception facilities present for marina tenants. So this could include a mobile toilet tank pump. Um, so that would be a service that comes to the marina periodically, or it could also be a permanent toilet tank pump located at the marina. So again, that's a required uh, blue flag criteria. And then you're gonna wanna give a rating about if the buildings and surrounding areas are well-maintained. So this means, can the public safely access docks? Are the stairs clear of obstructions? Are they well built? Um, ensuring that the public is safe when they're entering onto the docks or enter, uh, going into any facilities near the marina. And then you'd wanna, while you're walking to check the facilities and the docks, you wanna see if there's any unauthorized pollution coming from the buildings or equipment. So this could be leaky boats, um, any outfalls or pipes that you're seeing going into the water, uh, any, any discoloration of the water as well, you would want to, to do a quick walkthrough of the areas to ensure that nothing is going into the water or on the local or uh, the nearby environment. And then we would want to know if there's any large extension or rebuilding taking place at a blue flag marina. As part of blue flag and in Canada, if there are large extensions happening, typically an environmental assessment is required. And that assessment would have to be submitted as part of their application for the following year. So we want to know if there's any changes happening at the marina. And then you would want to check the surrounding natural areas and see if they're well preserved. So this would be local nearby environments on the marina site, whether it's a little garden or forest or a natural uh, sand dune, we would wanna make sure that they're well-preserved, they're not being trampled by visitors, there's not litter or trash in them. And typically they're marked by signage as well. And finally, you would want to check to see if there's sustainable transportation available at the marina. Some of the marinas have bike rentals, which is amazing. So if you do see that at a marina, please uh, flag that as a best management practice because it's really great to see. But this could also include uh, bike paths, uh, walking, running trails, public transit heading to the marina, and bike racks that are located, located at the marina so people can 
uh, bike to the marina and arrive in a sustainable way. Now we're moving into bath the facilities or services offered at the marina. So we want to check if the bathrooms and showers are open at the marina. Now due to COVID-19 there might be some restrictions in place and this is great. We want to see this. As part of Blue Flag all marinas and beaches have to also follow local, provincial and federal guidelines and regulations as they re relate to COVID-19. So if they're open but there's restricted access because of COVID-19 this is fine. When you're in the bathroom, you want to make sure that there's hand washing, uh, sinks available, soap, and also ta paper towel, particularly due to the pandemic. This is really important. We want to ensure that people can wash their hands. And then you want to check to see if the bathrooms are regularly cleaned. So you'd take a snapshot of the bathroom area, if it's clean or if it's, it's not clean. So we want to know either way, whether it's clean or not. Then we want to check if the facilities are accessible for persons with dis physical disabilities. This is really this is really important. Uh, beaches and marinas, Blue Flag does a really great job at ensuring access for people with physical disabilities to the bathrooms and also to the the docks themselves. So you want to make sure that uh, there is uh, toilet facilities there that are accessible. Then you'd want to check if there's a reasonable number of facilities, bathroom facilities and shower facilities. So if there's a long lineup of people out waiting to go to the bathroom, this likely is an indication that there aren't enough facilities. But if it appears that you can get in and out quickly, then um, that would be uh, a rating of yes, there's a reasonable number of facilities available. Then you want to check to see if there's potable water. So whether it's a water fountain or from sinks in the bathroom, to make sure that people can have fill their water bottles and not get dehydrated while they're out on the water. And then you want to give a rating as to whether the facilities are easy to find. So they should be marked on the information board, but if they're tucked away or far from the marina or in a, you know, an inaccessible place, we want to know, know about this. Now, not all marinas will have this, but you would want to ask the, the site operator whether there's a, rep, a boat repair state area or a washing area for boats. Some do have them, some don't. It's not imperative that they have a, a repair area or washing area. But if they do, you want to have a quick look at this area and want to ensure that there's no pollution from the boat repairing area going into the marina, the water, or the, the natural area around it. And then you'd want to check to see if there are larger repairing activities taking place under covers or indoors. So if there's huge uh, boats out being repaired in the open area, this would be something that you would want to flag to us. And I think that brings us to the end of environmental management. Again, there's a lot of information that's been presented. So I'll, if anyone has any questions, please type them in the chat box. Um, but if not, then we can move on. So Shane, have we had any questions come in? Not yet, but maybe if people have questions, they can type them in now and perhaps I can ask one on behalf of our fantastic volunteers we have here. Um, if I'm going to a, a marina to do a control visit and I don't know what a toilet tank facility or a bilge water pumping facility looks like, how would I know what to take a picture of? So this is a really good question. At marinas, there are typically staff um, or marina managers there who would be able to bring you to the space. So if you don't have if you don't have a meeting with the site manager or you're conducting this by yourself, you'd go into the marina office and you'd ask quickly, "Hey, where's your toilet tank reception? Or do you have a bilge water pumping station?" And then if they say yes, then you would say, "Oh, can you point me in the direction of where it is? Um, I'm doing a control visit and I'd like to take a photo." So that's how you would approach that. Um, as well as if for hazardous waste, typically those places are away from the public, so you may not be able to access it without the permission of marina staff. Thanks, Shane. That's a good question. Again, you don't have to be an expert, so always ask, you can always ask the marina staff. They're there to help. They're there to help marina visitors as well find these items at the marina because uh, marina visitors definitely need to know where the toilet tank is if they want to pump out their boat. Great, so I see there's no questions that come in, so I'm gonna move on to safety and services. 
this is the uh, fourth and final category that we're going to be looking at today. Um, and it's also very, very important. Blue flag has some pretty strict criteria that marinas have to meet in order to keep people safe when they're at the marina. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're flipping into this section is to see if the marina is equipped with life-saving equipment. So life-saving equipment includes, as you see here, life rings, but also life hooks, as well as flotation devices. At marinas, there must be ladders on the docks installed so that people, if people do fall in the water off of the dock or off of their boat, they can go to the ladder and come out of and climb out of the water. So blue flag re criteria requires that, that marinas have ladders installed on their docks. And then so on the blue flag form, there's a list of things you can select uh, for life-saving equipment to indicate what they have installed for the public to use. And then you would give a rating, does there seem to be enough to serve the whole marina? So at each dock, there, what, there are what we call fingers, and these are uh, areas beside the boat, docks beside the boats um, that separate boat slips. And there should be life-saving equipment for each berth. So a berth is where a boat uh, docks between the two fingers. And you'd want to ensure that there's equipment available for each, uh, for per every two berths um, nearby for the boats. And if you have any questions about what a berth is or fingers, you can ask us or also when you're there, Marina staff uh, will definitely be able to help you locate these items. And then you'd want to see if this life-saving equipment is easy to locate. So if, is there signage pointing to it? Is it marked on the information board? Can you clearly see where it's located so that the public can uh, quickly find it if they need it? And you want to check if it's in working order. So if the life rings are cracked in half or ropes missing or the hooks bent, uh, or the ladders are broken, this is something that we would want to flag. So if it's not working, definitely give a rating as no, it's not working if you're seeing that. If it is, that's great. And then this life saving equipment should be available 24 hours a day. It also shouldn't be locked onto any of the life saving poles. If it's locked, people can't access it quickly and it's of no use. So you wanna make sure that it's available 24 hours a day Typically, this could be present, presented on signage, but you could also ask marina staff or the site operator if they're there. Then you would want to ask if there's an emergency phone or telephone at or near the marina. Typically, the phone is available in the marina office, so you'd want to check at the office to see if there's an emergency phone. We know that everyone has cell phones these at these points, so um, we want to point out that if something happens, if someone goes into the water or a phone's dropped into the water or the phone's left on the boat, someone still needs to be, to be able to find another phone in order to be able to call emergency services if it's needed. Again, we want to check if the phone's in reasonable distance from the marina. So if you imagine at the farthest point of the marina, someone falls in or there's a fire or uh, a boat has been damaged in some way and uh, there's an emergency situation, you want to see how far it would, how long it would take you to run from that emergency situation to the emergency phone. If it's 20 minutes away, it's likely not going to be very useful. So uh, we would want to check to make sure that it's not located in a place that people can't easily access quickly. And then also in the marina office, there should be first aid equipment offered. And you would want to check to see if that first aid equipment is clearly signposted and easy to locate it, locate whether that's on separate signage or if it's presented on the information board. And then there should also be given a time as to when this first aid equipment is available. So if the marina office isn't open 24 seven, the first aid kit may not be open and available 24 seven. And then you'd wanna ask to be able to see the inside of the first aid kit. So ensure that it's in working order that all the supplies that you would need are inside that first aid kit. Another really important part of safety and services at marinas specifically is if there are firefighting equipment at the marina. Typically, they'll be stored in red boxes, as you can see on this image. That glass there can be smashed and broken, so it is accessible even if it's locked. If there were to be an emergency, staff or the public could break this glass and be able to put the fire out with the extinguisher. This has to be available 24 hours a day. So if it's being put away at the end of the night, 
it's of no use. It needs to be out there and available 24 hours in case there's any emergency fires that occur at night. And then you would want to ask staff or check to see if there is a fueling station. Fueling stations look like gas stations just on the water, typically with a concrete uh, pier that they're sitting on. And then you'd want to check if it is fire guarded. So fire guarding means that is there a concrete, uh, is it on concrete rather, rather than wood or is the uh, dock fireproofed? And then it's also strategically placed and planned with barriers that are intended to stop or slow the rate of a spread of fire um, from breaking the fuel available to the fryer. So you, it needs to be separated and there can't be, you know, a bunch of wood or items around the, the fueling station that could potentially be lit on fire. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to check if there are elect if there is electricity and water available, potable water available at each of the berths of a boat. So typically at the end of the berth of a boat, there will be a place with a, a, a place where there's a hose with potable water, as well as a black box where boats can plug in um, to uh, the electricity available at the marina. Again, if you're having trouble finding these, you can ask marina staff. Um, or even if there's tenants at the at the area, you can ask, oh, is there electricity available at, at your boat berth here? Is there water available? And they, they could likely give you an answer. Again, we want to touch on accessibility here at Blue Flag Beaches and Marinas. They really make an effort to make these areas and these special waterfront places accessible to the most amount of people. So we want to check to see if there's accessible parking available for uh, marina tenants as well as visitors to the marina and then are the marina facilities accessible to persons with a physical disability so this includes docks and ramps to be able to get out onto the docks and ramps if they're wanting to potentially be able to go out on the water for a day in a boat so that reaches the end of all the criteria that you're going to be looking to so you would be flipping into section six and this is just a brief section where you'd be able to provide comments to us and then also tell us who else you spoke to at the marina. The time it takes to conduct, conduct a control visit depends on the size of the beach or the marina. Sorry, there's a mistake there, but marina. So, and how easy it's, it is to be able to find all the requirements that you have to fulfill your control visit. So, Keeping this in mind, if it's really hard to find all this information and you're getting up to 90 minutes while conducting this control visit, it is very likely that the public, the visitors and the tenants would also have a lot of difficulty finding these items. So it could be a sign that potentially there's some things missing at the marina that we would need to check in with at the marina officer. So you'd give us information about that and say, hey, it really took a really long time, it took me about 90 minutes to two hours to, to fill this in because I had trouble finding things. You'd let us know that so we can touch base with the site manager to see what's happening. So that brings us to uh, questions. There's two emails here. This is Elise at swimdoingfish.ca. So if you have any questions after the fact, you can definitely direct them to me. And then most of you have been in contact with wonderful Sadie. Uh, so Sadie at swimdrinkfish.ca, she's been helping with the logistics of getting everyone registered for specific places. And then at the very bottom development, that's Shane, uh, Shane's email. He's helping with some blue flag development. So if you know of marinas who potentially could be blue flag and are not, you can definitely touch base with um, him as well. But I'll open up to the to questions again. Um, and then if we don't have any questions, then we have a couple more slides, but if people want to ask in the chat box, we can also uh, open it up to unmuting. So if people want to ask verbally, that's also available. Elise, maybe I can just jump in with one question and then people can feel free to unmute or, or type their question afterwards. Um, what should I bring with me if I'm a volunteer to the marina visit? That's a good idea. So let's flip back to, we'll go to COVID-19 measures. So these are in place for COVID-19, but also um, are pretty standard for if you are doing a control visit. Um, you wanna bring as few personal items as possible for your shift, um, especially if you're gonna be going in and outside 
into the uh, marina office and that type of thing. Obviously, bring a water bottle filled with water if it's really hot out. Um, you want to make sure to stay hydrated. Marinas are very open to sun. There's very little shade. Um, we've worked on marinas a lot, so you want to bring um, water, a hat, sun protection. And then also pen and paper along with your smartphone. This is also to take extra notes if you want to. Um, so those would be the items that I recommend bringing to the marina and a smartphone and a camera if you have one or you can use your smartphone to take the photos. Fantastic answer, Elise. I do not see any other questions in the chat box so far. Okay, perfect. We'll flip then to, and again, keep in mind that if you do have questions later, you can always email us. We're available at any time. Logistics, we'll be getting in touch with everyone um, next week. So Sadie and I will be connecting you with your site operators and the sites that you've chosen. So marina operators, and then we'll be scheduling a time for you to head out, a time that works for everyone. So for you, the marina operator as well. Um, we also um, know that there are people who've signed up in areas where there aren't blue flags at marinas. But if you do know of a marina that could is a, has great potential to be a blue flag marina, you can definitely take this form and bring it to the marina and fill it out. It gives us a really good idea of what's uh, if that marina is on on track to become a blue flag marina, and then we could potentially reach out to them to see if they're wanting to take the next step and actually apply for the 2021 season. So if you aren't near a blue flag marina or beach, you still want to help us out, this is definitely an option. So reach out to us um, for more information. We can help you there. But then I'm going to turn it over to Shane for the last remarks. So thank you everyone. You've stuck with us through this training session. We really do appreciate your help. The Blue Flag program, both Blue Flag marinas and Blue Flag beaches would not be possible without your support making these control visits happen. So thank you very much. We really do appreciate uh, your time and energy that you're putting into this. If this is the first time you've heard of Storm Drink Fish and Blue Flag, or you've known about us for years, um, we're welcome, welcome you to, uh, to Blue Flag Canada and, and we are here to support you throughout this process. Um, at least it looks like we have a question in the chat box. Um, if, I can, if I can ask that. Yeah, definitely. I'm responding via message right now too, but. Perfect. Uh... Definitely, Anton, you can, we can check out to see if there are marinas in Kingston that are on track to becoming blue flag. So you can send us an email and we can set you up for a visit. That would be amazing. My family grew up in, my, my father's from Kingston, so happy to see if there's blue flags there. Great. So I, if people have questions after this session, you have our email addresses, Elise at swimdrinkfish.ca, Sadie at swimdrinkfish.ca, myself, I'm Shane, Shane at swimdrinkfish.ca. Thank you again for attending. Um, we have a few minutes, so if you need to sign off, Elise, perhaps people can sign off if people want to stick around and ask more questions.